Hey everyone, how's it going? HKUHD here, and welcome to another video. So Amazon recently released the new 4K Max Fire Stick, which is said to have better performance and Wi-Fi 6 over the older 4K generation. I will do a quick unboxing, set up, and give you my initial thoughts about it. Okay, so let's quickly unbox this. So these are priced at over £50 or $50, and are normally discounted throughout the year. So we get a slightly faster processor and GPU, we get an increase in memory to 2GB of RAM, and Amazon are really spoiling us with that 8GB of storage. So first you get the Fire Stick itself, it still keeps the same design as the previous generation, and still uses micro USB. Then we get the USB to micro USB cable, then we get the third generation Alexa voice remote, and this comes with the dedicated application buttons. It feels fine, similar to the previous generations. Next we get some documentation. Then we get two AAA batteries, a power adapter, and a HDMI extender cable. And that's pretty much it. So you will need high speed internet with Wi-Fi and a HD or 4K HD TV with a HDMI input. Okay, so let's quickly set this up. Well, yeah, that doesn't fit. Great design. So I guess I will have to use the HDMI extender. Okay, now that's better. Now plug it in and turn on your TV. Now we're ready to set this up. So the first thing you're going to do is pair your Alexa voice remote to the Amazon Fire Stick. Then just follow the on-screen prompts, like connecting it to Wi-Fi, installing updates, and then logging into your Amazon account. Then quickly install some apps that you would like. This will be different based on the country you are in. When you get to this page, you are now ready to use your Fire Stick. So here it's now loaded. And what I immediately notice is how responsive it is. The menus feel really quick and responsive. So let me quickly tell you some of the key things I like about Fire OS 7. So it is split up into three menus, Home, Find, and Live. But quickly what I really like is that you can quickly change your account by heading over to the far left and select who's watching the Fire TV. That way it doesn't mess up with your recommendations. So quickly going into each of the menus, Home is for your content such as Up Next, some sponsored stuff, as well as your apps. This used to be the main way you would navigate through your Fire Stick. So next we have the Find tab, and this is where you can quickly search for movies, TV shows, and even applications. So I am going to download the Downloader app. This is useful for downloading third-party apps on your Amazon Fire Stick. And then next you have the Live tab. And this is useful for showing you your live subscriptions and what content is available right now. Next we have a quick access menu. And this will let you quickly jump into apps you use the most. And what's nice is that this is customizable. And you can choose what apps you would like in the menu, as well as what order. If you have a lot of apps, then I would recommend taking off the apps that you have quick access to on the remote. So on my remote I have quick access to Netflix, Disney, and Prime. So if you long press on an app, you can drag it to where you need it. So when I go back, you can see the app is in its new order. Then finally we have the settings menu. Another thing to mention is Amazon has its own app store, and here you can download compatible apps and games for your Fire Stick. So when buying a new Fire Stick, here are some of the settings that I use to improve my streaming experience enhance my privacy, and provide a better overall experience. So the first thing I'd like to do is enable ADB debugging and install from unknown apps. So you can do this by going to settings, my Fire TV, and then developer options, and then go ahead and turn ADB debugging on. Then select install unknown apps, and select the app that you would like to install from. Then next I'd like to manage my privacy settings and disable data monitoring. So to do this if you head over to preferences and then select privacy settings 
then I will turn all of these off. Then if you come back out of the menu and click on data monitoring, then I'll also make sure that this is off as well. The other thing I like to do is change my Amazon App Store settings. So by going to settings, applications, and then selecting App Store, I like to keep automatic updates on. I like to turn in-app purchases off, and then I also turn my notifications off. Notifications are sometimes quite annoying, so I'd like to change these as well. So I'd normally go to settings, preferences, notification settings, turn on do not interrupt. The final thing I do is change the Fire Stick display settings. So if you head to display and audio and click display, I make sure that the video resolution is on auto. I would then turn match original frame rate to on. I then make sure dynamic range settings is set to adaptive. And that covers some of the settings that I use. So the max is about speed and performance, which I noticed through using this Amazon Fire Stick. So you just saw how quickly Prime Video launched. And the speed of the interface is really nice. So if I quickly launch Netflix, you can see again I'm straight into it. This just improves the overall experience. Also, launching the Disney Plus app is a lot quicker on this Fire Stick than previous generations. You don't even need to time it to know that it's much faster. So again, we are straight in ready to find a TV show or movie to watch. Lastly, opening up YouTube is just as quick. Okay, so now I will quickly try and stream something. So if I head back out of this and into the Disney Plus app, this app doesn't seem to resume from its previous state. So if I just quickly select a film. Okay, so I've selected Black Widow. Now if I hit play. So here you can see it's loaded and it's now streaming. I will blur this out for copyright reasons. So the Amazon Fire Stick does stream in 4K HDR and it supports all the HDR formats you'd expect such as Dolby Vision, HDR10 and HDR10+. It also has support for Dolby Atmos. So with the inclusion of Wi-Fi 6, I do feel like the streaming speeds are improved. So I will quickly try and launch a TV show on Netflix and again it loads up nice and fast with no problems. So you can game on this Amazon Fire Stick and you can connect an external Bluetooth controller. So here I'm just trying Asphalt 8 and it's a lot more playable on this one than previous generations. So all we need now is more games on the Amazon App Store or you could use the Amazon Lunar service. You do get the picture in picture functionality with this Fire Stick and this allows you to view compatible cameras on your Fire Stick. There are two ways to do this. You can ask Alexa to view picture in picture or based on your settings, when your doorbell is rung, it will pop up with a live feed. You can also talk to the person from the Fire Stick. Okay, so here are some final thoughts. Micro USB should be illegal in 2021. Definitely should have went with USB-C. It would be nice if the Fire Stick had a built-in Ethernet port. You can buy an adapter, but that just increases the price. The Amazon interface is nice. It's quick and responsive. Amazon has more or less all of the apps you'd expect from the streaming services. Search works okay. So does Amazon Alexa. The remote is pretty standard. It would have been nice if you could program your own shortcuts. If you are heavily invested in the Amazon ecosystem, then this probably would be the streaming stick to buy. I would personally hold off just to see what Roku are doing with their 4K streaming stick. Okay, so that's the end of the video. If you found it useful, then drop a like as it really helps the channel out. If you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.